Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up and today the polytunnel cub is going on. I've got a couple of pairs of hands coming down to help, namely Andy and Terry. They're coming down, down to help me get this cover on. But there are a couple of little jobs I need to get on with first before uh, we get that on. So we're going to have a quick look around. <laughs> so I've got the cover wrapped up in that and I bought that. I've just checked the delivery date on the label and it was um, July. 2019 because I was going to put this uh, tunnel up that I'd planned to put up there um, last spring but then uh, that didn't happen and then this other tunnel came up which is the one I'm putting up now anyway I've had that for two years gosh thankfully it's bigger now in the tunnel itself made a start on it the other day haven't been, I wasn't down here yesterday and I've got uh, a trench dug in because we're trenching the plastic in on this. This tunnel itself came with a netting base from side rail here to base rail, should be netting all the way round. I am going to fit it and that will allow me later to I'll give me some versatility. And on this side, I've already got a wind up roll down curtain to go on the inside and I will be able to utilise the netting on this side for ventilation. Not too fussed about this other side, but later if I feel I need it, I can do it. But the netting will already be in place for me to do that. Now, to crack on this morning, after I've cut that piece of plastic to size, which I'm going to do in a minute, all these tubes need the anti-hotspot tape I'm putting on. Now, the anti-hotspot tape stops the bare metal when it gets hot in the summer and inside the polytunnel, it can degrade the plastic if it touches it. So all the bare metal and sharp edges you want covered with anti-hotspot tape. That also helps the cover glide over the top as well. Makes life a lot easier for getting the cover on. So here's a decent little tip for you. This, the edge of the side raise, there's a heck of a point in it and the cover's going to be stretched down over the top. So on a spare bit of plastic, I'm just going to fold it over a couple of times and wrap it round. This will just take the sting out of the tail when you later tighten the plastic. Make that less grabby. So there we go, that just uh, takes away that rough edge. So I'm starting to get the uh, anti-hotspot tape on now. Frame has all been cleaned. I'm going right over the ridge collar, right on the very top of the frame. So this leaves a bare bit at the very front of the frame, along here, the front edge, the plastic will lap over. I'll put another piece along there as well. So there we go, that's, that's that fitted, a bit wobbly, but it doesn't matter. As long as it goes round and covers the frame where the plastic will touch, that's what matters. So I'll crack on and get the rest of the frame done. So with a couple of extra pairs of hands today, we've managed to get the cover over. Um, it's battened at either end to, for the tension. Um, and then roughly just put into the trenches with, and we've got some soil in there. You see the batten that goes over the top here to the top of the doorway. That just holds the tension, the full length of the tunnel. 
and then you start in the sides, the middle of the sides here, and you start putting some soil in, in the trench, and then you start to work towards this end. And we've had to stop because we've lost the weather, we've lost the sunshine, and you really want the sun beating down on this cover because it sort of instantly warms it up inside, which heats the plastic and allows you to stretch it so that you get that tight, um, a tight cover. You can see at the minute that it's blowing around. If you left it like that, this, this tunnel would fall apart within uh, probably a year, 18 months. Wouldn't last very long at all. So you need to get it tight. So what we're gonna do now is we've just roughly pinned it down so it doesn't blow away. And as the warmer weather comes later this week, if we get half an hour or an hour of sunshine one morning this week and as long as I've got an extra pair of hands with me, my mate should be down, then we can, we can jump on it and, you know, start finishing it off. So that is essentially it now. The tunnel is up, <coughs> excuse me, the tunnel is up and covered and we've roughly landscaped down this edge. Still a few things left to do. Notice no doors. The timber that was supplied to make the doors, I started making the doors up this morning and it's not in the best shape. I mean, you see the state of this timber here. This timber here, it's not in the best. So I'm gonna get some timber to replace these and make doors that are strong and gonna last. Still also to do in here is I've got to put the wind-up mechanism uh, in which goes behind this bar and in this area of the thick timber. The wind-up curtain goes there. You can see I've got the netting on the inside, the plastic's on the outside which I'll cut away once the wind-up mechanism's in here for the roll-down polythene curtain and that will give ventilation and I've got it on both ends and all the way down this side. So that needs to go on. I've also got guttering that needs to go on the outside as well. And that will collect in barrels at either end of the tunnel. So we've got those to go on yet. Um, but from the day after tomorrow, I can't be down here tomorrow. I'll be digging this over and getting it planted if the doors are on or not. Um, yeah, so that's it for this build. But as I say, it's just little things that need doing now. I also need to make the, the benching, the temporary benching I'm gonna put in down this, down this side. But this is all customization stuff that's all gonna happen after the fact. And the main thing is, is that the tunnel's up and operational and decent size, fairly sturdy. So yeah, just, have to come at it again. It's just one of those things. I could use that timber on that door, but I wouldn't be happy with it. And it would play on my mind. So I'll replace it and um, make decent doors. And of course, there is one final thing that needs to happen. After all that, we need a warm day for it. Is I've got to lift this whole frame. Now, if you look down here, what you're looking at down here is the foundation tube. And that comes all the way up to this collar. This is just set on this foundation tube and this hoop, sorry, this hoop here is just sat over the top of the foundation tube. It's not fixed in any way. What I need to do is loosen this, lift this frame up, all the hoops, and then tight, move this collar up and tighten it. And that will tension the cover all over. So it only wants to come up an inch or two on all the hoops and that will just final tension the cover just to get you near to tight as possible. It won't be perfect, they never are, but it'll be much better than it is presently, even though it's good. So that's it for this build. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you managed to gain something from it. Um, if you're buying a kit, make sure you've got all the parts for it. Make sure you check and read all the instructions and read through it several times before you go ahead with it. There we go, new polytunnel. 
So there is much to be done with customization of this tunnel, which will happen over the next couple of months and probably never stop really. Uh, I'll always be doing something to it. Um, this is a bog standard tunnel. Uh, it's nice, it's a good, really good height. I think it's eight foot tall, 18 foot long, 12 foot wide. And I've got the extra wide doors so I can, you know, I can build things. I could build a picnic table in here in the winter and paint it and then take it out if I need to. So it, it gives me that flexibility to use it as a workspace as well as planting space. But for now, that's it. That's the end of this little build. Uh, look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you very, very soon. Hopefully doing gardening. Sick of construction. <laughs> see you. <yous. laughs>